Persecution, war, violence. There are more than 40 million men, women, and children around the world that need protection. They can be persecuted because of their ethnicity, religion, nationality, or political opinion, or just because they belong to a social group that someone in power does not like. Refugees are innocent people forced to flee their homes and communities, facing violence, imprisonment without trial, rape, torture, or death. Many have no choice but to flee, leaving family, friends, and country behind. It is the most difficult decision to make. For years, the UK has offered sanctuary to refugees. Around 63 million people live in Britain. Refugees make up only a quarter of 1% of the population, a very small number. Each year, around 20,000 people fleeing persecution arrive in the UK seeking asylum. Under international law, the government has to provide protection to people who meet the criteria for asylum. In the northeast of England, we have a very small number of asylum seekers, fewer than 2,000 out of a population of 2.6 million people. In Newcastle, the number of asylum seekers is smaller still. Fewer than 300 people are waiting to hear whether they will be allowed to stay. When a person is in danger and has to flee, there is often no time to say goodbye to family and friends, and no chance of taking their possessions with them. People are called asylum seekers while they are waiting to hear if the government will let them stay. If the government thinks it's dangerous for people to return, it grants them status as refugees. So what happens when a person fleeing persecution arrives in the UK to claim asylum? Most people fleeing persecution arrive by plane. They present their passport at immigration. They have to tell someone that they want to claim asylum. They are taken to a screening interview where they are fingerprinted photographed and questioned. They are then sent to a nearby hostel. Some time later they are dispersed, sent by bus to another city in the UK. They then have a long interview with a government caseworker and interpreter. A first decision is then reached. If negative, they can appeal. But if the appeal is rejected, they face detention and removal back to their country. If positive, they are given refugee status, initially for five years, and the challenge of building a new life in a strange place begins. Aisha, a young woman forced to leave her country, will tell us the story of what happened after she arrived at the airport in London. When I finally got off the plane, I had been traveling for days. I was very tired and confused. I handed over my passport and told the man I needed to claim asylum. I was taken away and asked a lot of questions it was difficult to talk straight away. I felt exhausted. I was fingerprinted and photographed before being sent to a hostel. After a couple of days, I was told I was being dispersed to Newcastle. I had no idea where this was. After a long journey by coach, we finally arrived. I was already missing my friends and family and felt so lonely and frightened. A week later, I had to go to a asylum interview where I met my caseworker from the government. She asked me a lot of questions and I tried to tell her everything that had happened to me in my country. It was very upsetting to talk about the horrible things that I had seen. I was given somewhere to stay and a little money, roughly five pounds a day. I wanted to do more for myself, but we were told we weren't allowed to work while the decision was being made. After about six weeks, I received the first decision from the government. It was bad news. My asylum claim was refused, but I was told I could appeal. My solicitor said she thought I had a strong case. I had waited for months for the appeal decision, and this was a very hard time. A few people living in our streets were very unfriendly, calling us bad names and throwing eggs when we went out. After four months, I heard the appeal was successful. I was granted refugee status. It was a huge relief. I later found out that only a third of applicants are given refugee status. Two thirds are rejected. They can appeal, but only a quarter of those appeals succeed. The rest are told they could return to the country they fled, but most are too scared to do so. 
they can then be detained or forcibly removed. And once their application is rejected, they are evicted from their house and denied even the few pounds a day they had been getting. The system makes them homeless, but for many I know this is still better than returning to the danger they fled from. The Western Refugee Service helps people like me who are granted refugee status as well as those who are waiting for the government to decide. They also help the people who have been refused asylum. Western Refugee Service is supporting over 400 people from 37 different countries. They make us feel welcome. They give us time to talk and help us to get back on our feet. But we still have to deal with the trauma that forced us to flee and the loneliness that comes from being away from home. That's very tough and it can be a very long time before that goes away.